you had a patient with stage four chronic kidney disease, would you feel comfortable starting them on an ACE inhibitor? Now, there's a lot of providers that would not feel comfortable with that. We know that ACE inhibitors and ARBs can potentially cause an acute renal injury, and so there's some providers that are going to be very leery about starting one of these medications in a patient who already has reduced renal function to begin with. So I want to look at a study that was published in 2006 in the New England Journal of Medicine, and it looked at the efficacy and safety of benazapril in patients with advanced renal disease. It was a double-blinded, randomized control trial. It took place in China, so all the patients involved were Chinese. It had 422 patients enrolled in the study. Patients were aged 18 to 70 years old, and they were all diagnosed with non-diabetic chronic kidney disease. So just to quickly go over some of the inclusion criteria, patients had to have serum creatinine of 1.5 to 5 milligrams per deciliter. They had to have a creatinine clearance of 20 to 70. They also had to have persistent proteinuria, which the researchers defined as having 300 milligrams per day of protein in the urine. Also, patients could not have been on an ACE inhibitor or an ARB within the last six weeks before the screening process started. Now, patients were excluded from the study if they had an immediate need for dialysis, if they were taking NSAIDs, if they had had a heart attack or stroke within the last year, or if they had obstructive uropathy. So patients were separated into basically two different arms. The first arm had just one group, and it was patients with serum creatinine of 1.5 to 3. Those patients were treated with benazapril 10 milligrams twice a day. There was not a placebo group in this arm. The researchers said it would be unethical to not treat these patients because there was more data in, in this patient population than there was with more advanced stages of kidney disease. Now, the second arm had group 2, which was patients with serum creatinines of 3.1 to 5, and they were treated with benazapril 10 milligrams twice a day as well, and those were compared directly to the placebo arm. So this is what we're going to be kind of focusing on, this group two versus the placebo. Now, the primary outcome that the researchers were looking for was an occurrence of creatinine doubling, end-stage renal disease, which they classified as someone who needed dialysis or a renal transplant or death. So all three of those things went in to make up the composite that was the primary outcome. They also looked at the occurrence of creatinine doubling by itself, as well as end-stage renal disease by itself. And some of the secondary outcomes that they looked for was a reduction in proteinuria, a decline in GFR, and also they looked at blood pressure lowering. So let's go through this table real quick. The primary outcome, again, this is just group two. I didn't include group one in this table just for time's sake. But the primary outcome was seen in 41% of patients, whereas it was seen in 60% of patients in the placebo group. So this gave us a p-value that was significant. And if you calculate the number needed to treat, it was actually five. So I didn't list this on the table, but if you look at creatinine doubling, by itself, taking that out of the composite, looking at it by itself, it was significantly reduced in the benazapril group compared to the placebo. And the same was true for end-stage renal disease. Now, death only occurred in one patient in the study. It was in group two in the benazapril group, but uh, the patient died of pneumonia, so it wasn't thought to be related to the benazapril in any way. Now, looking at the reduction in proteinuria, 52% reduction in the benazapril group and only 20% reduction in the placebo group. Now, also keep in mind there was a reduction in the placebo group because these patients were on a protein-restricted diet, so that's where some of that comes from, but we had a significant difference comparing the benazapril to placebo. And patients also had a slower rate of GFR decline in the benazapril group compared to placebo. And that's also important because the researchers stated that significant proteinuria, which they classified as greater than 100 milligrams per day, was directly associated with faster GFR decline. So we're obviously getting not only the primary outcome benefits, but that decrease in decline because we're reducing the proteinuria in these patients. 
This is probably because ACE inhibitors will cause dilation in the efferent arterial in the nephron, which will decrease intraglomerular pressure and decrease proteinuria. Now, I also included blood pressure on this chart as well, just to show that there was actually no difference in the two groups between blood pressure lowering, no significant difference. So this also makes a good case if you have a provider that you're working with that doesn't want to add a low-dose ACE inhibitor like this because they're worried about dropping the blood the patient's blood pressure too low. So while these results do give us some insight to treating patients um, with reduced renal function with an ACE shows benefit, we do have to keep in mind the whole patient population was Chinese. We do have to use a little bit of caution if we extrapolate this data to patients uh, who are Caucasian or African American um, because there is going to be a little bit of genetic variability there. But all in all, I think we can definitely use this data for our patients or for making recommendations to a provider. We don't want to start an ACE inhibitor if the patient's potassium is 5.6 or greater. We also want to monitor serum creatinine because if we have an increase of more than 30% from baseline within the first six to eight weeks, we need to go ahead and stop the ACE inhibitor. Now, this is typically due to dehydration if we do see this uh, acute renal injury. So it's important to hydrate patients and maybe if the benefit outweighs the risk, maybe consider trying it again. That's all I have for you in this trial. Definitely take a look at it in its entirety and uh, leave a comment or send me a message. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it.